Hello listeners, this video is about Kantapura written by Raja Rao. Raja Rao was an Indian American writer. He has written novels, short stories. His works deeply rooted in metaphysics. Metaphysics is a philosophy that studies the fundamental nature of reality. The basic principles such as identity, change, space, time, necessity and the like. His notable works include The Serpent and the Rope which he wrote in 1960 and Kantapura which he wrote in 1938. His work The Serpent and the Rope it's an autobiographical novel which talks about the spiritual truth in Europe and India. This book won him the Sahitya Academy Award in 1964. He has also got other awards such as Padma Bhushan in the year 1969, Padma Vibhushan in the year 2007 and New Start International Prize for Literature in 1988. Let us see an overview of the novel Kantapura. This novel Kantapura by Raja Rao is about the Indian freedom struggle which was initiated by Mahatma Gandhi in the early 20th century. The novel reflects Gandhian struggle for independence against the British. This novel grieves about how the independence movement becomes a tragic reality in a tiny and secluded village in South India. Now let us see the characters in this novel. The narrator of this novel is Achaka. Achaka is a woman from the village of Kantapura. She is an elder Brahmin woman who is very familiar with everyone in her village. Next is Murti. Murti is the central protagonist of this novel and the leader of Kantapura village. Murti is a young Brahmin man who rejects the hierarchical ca caste system in favor of social equality. He is the leader of Gandhian resistance movement. Next is Rangama. Rangama is a widow in Kantapura. She becomes the secondary leader of Gandhian movement. She comes from a wealthy city family and after her marriage she becomes sister-in-law of waterfall Venkama. Next is Ratna. Ratna is Kamalama's daughter. She is a young girl. She was married at the age of 10. But soon after her marriage, her husband died. Ratna becoming a widow at her young age, even her mother excluded her from the society and family. And even the rest of the village treat her as paraya, means treat her as an outcast. She is also seen as a source of shame. Next is Bhatta. Bhatta is a powerful businessman. He has collected large parts of land and has a part in Kantapura. The villagers borrow money from him. He acts as if he is generous, but he actually gets very high interest from the people in order to gain financial profit. Next is Mahatma Gandhi, the most important leader of the Indian independence movement. He is famous for his belief in Satyagraha or non-violent resistance. He also advocated wearing only khadi. The villages of Kantapura, they worship Gandhi as a reincarnation of Shiva. Gandhi never appears in the novel but he only serves as a symbolic figure when the villages politically campaign. The followers of Murti, they identify them by their loyalty to Gandhi. They shout as Mahatma Gandhi ki jai. They glorify him and they also march against the police. Next is Patel Rangi Gauda. He is a government representative and a village headman, also a landlord. Next is the Swami. The Swami is the regional Hindu religious leader. He is based in the city of Mysore. He supports the Brahmin's campaign against Murti's Gandhian movement. Next is Rachana. Rachana is a coolie who joins the Gandhians early in the book and eventually he becomes one of the group's most important leaders. Next is Rachi. Rachi is 
Pariya Rachana's wife, she ultimately burns down the village of Kantapura. Next is waterfall Venkama. She is a bitter and a talkative Brahmin woman in the village. She criticizes Gandhian campaign. Next is Dori. Dori is a young Brahmin man. He went to the university from this Kantapura village. He adopted by living city life lifestyle. He is widely called as the university graduate. Next is Narasama. Narasama is Murti's elderly mother. She opposes Murti for joining anti-caste position. Also wants his son to marry a wealthy Brahmin family daughter. Next is Bade Khan. He is a Muslim police officer who moves to Shikinton Coffee Estate in order to keep an eye on Kantapura. Next is Shahib. Shahib is the original head of the Shikinton Coffee Estate. He is a cruel and violent profiter. Next is New Shahib. He is the nephew of Shahib. He takes control of the Shekinton estate after Shahib's death. Next is Maestri. Maestri is Shahib's right hand man. He supervises the coolies who are working in Skeffington Coffee estate. Next is Kenchama. Kenchama is goddesses of Kantapura. She has battled a demon on the red Kenchama hill near the town ages ago. Next is Shankar. Shankar is the secretary of the Congress Committee in the city of Karwar, which is a nearby city around the village Kantapura. Shankar is also a Gandhian and a lawyer. There are minor characters in this novel. We can know about them as we learn the summary of the novel. The novel has a foreword. It starts with a foreword and totally has 19 sections. I am going to deliver the whole summary of all 19 sections. Kantapura, it's a small South Indian village. The novel is also named as Kantapura. This novel basically talks about the race about Gandhian nationalist movement in the small village Kantapura. The story is narrated by Achaka. She is an elderly Brahmin woman with an encyclopedia knowledge about everyone in her village. She narrates the story with bends and curves by traditionally exploring the village, narrating its traditional legendary history, its people and its gods. Achaka, as the novel starts, she situates this village Kantapura in the Western Ghats mountain range in southwest India which has recently become a centre of the British colonial spice trade. The deity of the village is Kenchama. She is the goddesses of the village. She fought a demon on the Kenchama hill above Kantapura ages ago. She is the one who protected the villages ever since. Achaka, she introduces the villages and talks about the numerous residents of all caste. She introduces the educated as well as well-educated Brahmins, well of Brahmins, including the wealthy orphan Dori. Dori proclaims himself as Gandhian after attending a university in the city. And she introduces about Murti, who refuses to marry a wealthy family's daughter. Then Achaka introduces the potters and weavers in the village, also talks about the agriculture activities that's happening in the village. Then finally she talks about the Paraya. The Parayas live in a small hut at the edge of the town. Patel and Sundra Rangi Gauda, they are the two most powerful figures in the village. One day, Murti finds a linga, a small idol depicting the Lord Shiva. He found this linga in Achaka's backyard. The Brahmins began to conveying prayers for it. Soon after, Murti begins collecting money from everyone in the village to have a Harikatha. Harikatha 
is an art form which composes storytelling, poetry, music, drama, dance and philosophy. The name of Harikada is Jayaramachar. He performs his religious discourse about Mahatma Gandhi's promise to save India from foreign domination that is the British rule. This creates a confused situation in the village especially as Murti began to convert the villages to Gandhi's movement and a Muslim policeman named Badi Khan he moves into town. Patel Rangar Gauda he refuses to give a place for Khan to stay. So he goes to the nearby Skeffington Coffee Estate where the Shahib offers him a hut among the workers. Meanwhile, Murti also convinces people to spin their own wool and weave their own khadi cloth since Gandhi believes that foreign goods impoverish India. Bata, he hates Gandhism because he does businesses that runs on high interest loans. The farmers who sell their rice to the city people, they borrow money from Bata and he give it for high interest. Bata he refuses to create modernization of India and also erosion of the caste system. So he strongly emphasizes on establishing a Brahmin party to fight against Murthy's spreading over Gandhism. Because on the other end Murthy is trying to gain attention for Gandhism. Murthy began to get many supporters like rambling waterfall Venkama, the priest temple Rangapa and his wife Lakshama, then Murthy's mother Narasama and his wife Chinnamma. Murthy also begins to give lectures about the dedication of Mahatma Gandhiji's work. He also captures the house of wealthy widow Rangama. He takes the house in order to keep the spinning wheels and books about the non-violent resistance. The powerful Swami in Mysore also promises if anyone in the village is distracting the traditional system by interacting with many different people from different castes. And when Narasama finds out that her son Murti is the one who is trying to do so, she is distraught and tries to stop his son from doing so. And when Murti is seen carrying a corpse, Narasama, she dies on the banks of a nearby river, Khemavati, and Murti moves into Rangama's house. Then the narration moves to Skeffington estate. There the maestri convinces the coolie workers to come and work in the estate. He calls the poor people from the neighboring villages from around India for back-breaking work. Back-breaking means tiresome work. But their wages are low and he contaminates their lifestyle like he beats them, pays low wages to them also encourages them to spend their money by drinking at the nearby toddy stand. No workers can move from there for almost 10 years. By the time a new Shahib appears there after Shahib's death, well, this new Shahib is a kinder person than the earlier one. But this new Shahib has raped a girl and murdered his father for refusing to give up his daughter. On the other side, Murti's Gandhians, with the help of a Brahmin clerk, Vasudev, they begin to teach the coolies to read and write and also recruit them to join the protest movement. Bade Khan, a Muslim police officer who moves to Skeffington Coffee Estate, after his move into the estate, a coolie named Rachana moves off the estate and joins the movement. Many coolies from Skeffington estate, they move from the estate's work and then join in the movement. Now this created a big fuss and the coolie women also, they grabbed the Khan's beard. Murti takes personal responsibility for all the attacks between the coolie and Bade Khan. But this plays a counterpart to the Mahatma's doctrine of non-violence. Murti then fast for three days and started to meditate continuously in the village temple. 
by receiving visions from Shiva. Meantime, Hari, who is called as Rangama, then the wise elder Brahmin Ramakrishnaya and the widow Paraya girl Ratna take care for him. Murti receiving the advices from these men surrounded by him. He becomes stronger and he responds to all the threat from waterfall Venkama and Bata. He then launches a movement and calls it as Don't Touch the Government campaign. Later, Muti and his supporters, they rally inside the village and protest the mistreatment of Paraya, that is the coolies, that's happening in the local British plantation, that is the Skeffington Coffee Estate. Now, as they do so, the colonial police, they respond by wounding many villagers and started to arrest them. Now, this move leads to rigorous protests outside the coffee estates as villagers demand for justice. This rigorous protest makes the colonial government to respond more ruthlessly against the protesters. The policemen, they did not spare even the old children and the women during the picketing. Picketing is referred to a group of workers who protest outside a building in order to prevent other workers from going inside. Even the coolies who are working inside the Skeffington coffee farm, they get anger because they see how their fellow villagers are being tormented by the government. They also decided to join the protest and the situation becomes very noisy. As a result, Murti is detained and given a long-term jail sentence. Meantime, Rangamma, an educated and a respected widow, she remains and takes charge of the Congress to continue with Gandhiji's struggle for freedom. She organized many campaigns and trains many young women to be front runners in the fight for freedom. Moreover, even the leaders of the movement, they launch a campaign asking their followers and the village people not to pay taxes and land revenues to the government. They also educate the followers to stay as a non-violent until the government moves to destroy their farms and properties. The government also responds by coming to Kantapura and brutally beats and shoots the protesters. They also wound thousands of villages. The merciless shootings make the protesters to start responding violently against the government. Then the government forces over power to the protesters who are then later forced to leave the village. Before leaving the village, the villagers were hiding out in the sugarcane fields and they watched their neighbors being slaughtered by the government officials. A village woman, Rachi, she decides to burn the village down. Rachi, a paraya woman who is the wife of Rachana, she makes a bonfire and sets the village alight and all the women they continue to march as far as they can from Kantapura. They march across the mountains and move into the jungle. The neighboring village people honor them as pilgrims of Mahatma and they offer a new home in the village of Kasipura. And in the following year, since Kantapura's destruction, Achaka, she explains that the villages have scattered and they have moved on with their lives. And Murti has been released from the prison. He although gave up on Gandhiji, he then started to compromise with the British and decided to join Jawaharlal Nehru's movement for the equal distribution of wealth. Rangama, who also went to the prison along with Murti, did not come back from the prison and the only person who has returned to Kantapura after the destruction is Rangai Gauda. He tells Achaka that the village has been sold away to the city people from Bombay. Let us see the themes of this novel. The evil of colonial rule, women's role, Education as a powerful tool to fight against colonialism, anti-Muslim sentiment, caste, economic exploitation, Gandhism, nationalism and colonialism, labor, exploitation and economic independence. The setting of this novel happens in Kantapura, a village in South India during the 1930s. Hope this video helps. If you have query, please write it down on the comment. 
थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग